But guess what we got? I'm so excited. We got our very own bouncy house. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, I'm super excited. We're getting caught up on videos, getting a little closer every day. Before too long, you're gonna be right caught up to where exactly Scrappy is today. Um, right now, we're gonna do a quick video. We're gonna show you some paint. I'm starting to throw down some silver. I got orange and a lot of black, clear carbon fiber coming up real soon. Uh, also, we're gonna bend some acrylic on the top of my aircraft, get my dome in, and I'm gonna start throwing down some Stuart fabric and start covering up some control surfaces. So we got a lot to do in this video. You know the drill, as always, let's get to work. Okay, I've got this part drying up and a new scrap part. So I don't know if you can tell, there's tape all over this. This is broken. This is out of a carbon cub. Um, my friend Troy hit some pretty good sized turbulence. Oh, oh, what's going on? Hello from the cockpit, this is your captain speaking. And he's a big guy and he had his headset and he hit the ceiling so hard, it cracked this glass um, on his carbon cub. So perfect for scrappy. So. I've got this section I'm going to pull out of the middle and it looks like this crack that's going through here, I'm still going to have enough room right here to take out this section and put it as my skylight. So more scrap parts for Scrappy. Let's get to work. But guess what we got? I'm so excited. We got our very own bouncy house. And I'm gonna put it up. <laughs> and I never grow up. <laughs> I think I'm five years old, kind of rhyming. So I got this thing, it's like a blow up bouncy house, but it's a paint booth. So I've always been painting, I've built wood frames and stuff. This time I found this bouncy house online. Well, it looks like a bouncy house, it's a blow up paint booth. So now rather than painting out in the open and just covering all the crap in the shop or wetting the floor or putting down plastic. I'm gonna blow up the house and paint all the scrappy parts in my little bouncy house. So let's put it up. <laughs> I'm really excited for such a silly thing, but it's cool. Let's get to work. <laughs> okay guys, it's late. I lost uh, anybody to help me hold my camera, so the rubber gloves is doing the job right now, a little box of <laughs> rubber gloves. But you can see I've got this shape done. Kind of hold it up for you. You can see the shape, now you can see the crack was taped together from before right here. And I was just barely able to clear this vent hole, some holes where it was mounted before, and get this big triangle shape I need. So I'm really happy. The uh, art turned out great. Um, made a little, kind of couple little wrinkles I was worried about when you're trying to heat up near a, a circle or an edge. But the area in the middle that I needed <laughs> turned out great. I was a little worried about it. Now, there's a trick when you're heating up acrylic like this and getting it to move, and that's patience. <laughs> that's the trick. Patience, you just need, and. Really, you need to keep the heat really even. So I started out with one light on it, wasn't going enough. I ended up adding another pair of lights to it, two 500 watt sets of 500 watt lights to get some heat on it. I let that warm up for about 45 minutes, got it nice and hot and it still wasn't moving. And then I got the heat gun 
and I went back and forth multiple times and then occasionally lifted it up, warmed the underside, set it back down, went back to the top. You need to get really even heat. That's the most important part. If you don't, when it cools off, it's gonna get all wavy on you. And so the thing to keep in mind is as you heat it, it expands. And so when it expands on one side, it starts to curve what doesn't look natural and you get it hot enough, then it will fall. And so you want to warm both sides so that as the acrylic expands from the extra heat, that you get it to expand evenly. So I guess the trick is really, I should have had two people on it and had two guns going. I was just barely able to keep up with the heat. It kept cooling as I went. If I had more even heat or my old vacuum oven, <laughs> it'd been great. But I was able to do it this kind of cheating way with a hot gun and a few lights and it works for small parts. So success, <laughs> I didn't have to go borrow anyone's oven and uh, I got it done. So even heat, oh, and then another tip, don't cool it off <laughs> with like water or something. Be patient. You gotta work it slowly, back and forth, be patient. And then when you're done, like walk away. <laughs> Leave it alone for an hour. If you get a rag and try and cool it off and kind of hustle along, it'll start to twist and move and do dumb things. So uh, I think it's gonna work out great. I'm really happy. Let's get back to work. All right, guys. I couldn't be more excited to have some guests here. I got Stuart Systems here. We've been talking about what we need to do for Scrappy. It's gonna have the craziest prop blast of any cub on the planet. And I need to make sure that the tail feathers, vertical, horizontal, stay together. On Scrappy, we're gonna do something different. We're actually gonna take two medium, there's different thicknesses. We're gonna take two of the medium layers and we're gonna use two and bond them together and we won't even have a tape seam for air to connect to. So it's basically like making a sheet of plywood where you put two together and they're actually stronger than one plus one one plus one equals more like three when they're bonded together. So that's what we're gonna do with Scrappy. So I want you to come check it out. We're gonna hurry and knock out some ter tail feathers. I'm just about done. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna call it done. So we've got it on a lower temperature setting. Started in the middle between the glue joints, pulled it to the middle, worked my way out back and forth three dimensionally. And uh, it's really cool. I think uh, gluing and stuff is all right and it's not that big of a job, it just takes time. Once you get the fabric down and you get to play with a little iron, I, I thought I'd always hate ironing and I officially love it. <laughs> so it was really cool to pull this all tight and then we'll do uh, another layer on the other side. And we're actually gonna do double layer on this. So the next step here is I'm gonna put uh, a tape down the middle to strengthen it up. Then I'm gonna rivet it down. Uh, all my seams, uh, all my uh, uh, ribs are gonna be riveted down. Then I'll do a whole second layer glued to the entire thing. So instead of seeing the cut tape lines, you're gonna see the rivets hiding underneath a full second layer with an, uh, also an additional strip over top of that. So it's gonna be really smooth, really tight, and you will not have any joints that can catch wind because it'll be all solid. Two full layers, it's more than needed, but it's really strong and uh, it's gonna be able to handle that prop blast scrap he's gonna put out. So, man, this is cool. You should learn how to do it, it's awesome. I got a whole bunch to do, I'm gonna get back to work. All right, the moment of truth. Ta-da! So there you can see the step I made right there. This is discarded, but I'll actually use it to put on the acrylic that I heated and shaped. And you can see, <laughs> look at that match. That is absolutely perfect. It's gonna work well. So I'll cut this out using this as my template, I'll actually just use double stick tape. Stick this on here where I don't hit any of the holes or screws, I'll double stick tape it. Then I'll cut it out and sand it right to this. 
as my guide, and then I know the acrylic will then go back in here. This right here, I can now take, I'll put a piece of half inch tape around this edge as it just a guide, and I'll cut the middle of this out. I can set the acrylic in here, and I'll have the perfect reveal, about a sixteenth of an inch, the width of the blade I used to cut this out, and I'll put that in, so pretty cool. <laughs> So far, so good. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I just left sanding on Scrappy to come see this beautiful woman, my wife, Chandra, working on Scrappy. She's just learning fabric from the best fabric person I know, hiding over here ironing. <laughs> Monica, this is my best friend Jason's wife, is just amazing at fabric. She's putting on Stuart system. And we're doing two full layers on all the control surfaces of Scrappy. So. This is the first layer of two. It's awesome to be working on Scrappy in one hanger and come over here and two beautiful women working on Scrappy in another. Making it pretty. <laughs> I'm gonna leave and run over to Scrappy and let them get back to work. <laughs> Trimmed and fitted. Should drop right in. There we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna bomb this in, lay some carbon over the edge. This will be a permanent insert, kind of like I've done on my Lancer Legacies, another race aircraft. So I could drill it and, and then bolt it in and have it removable. But if I do that, I'm more likely to get a crack or a break in it than just bonding it in permanent. Um, and we're such a small piece, big rounded corners, no intersecting parts or no real movement in here. The likelihood of this breaking is so low that I'm going to go ahead and make it a permanent attachment. So I'm going to start that now. Back to work. All right, guys, so I'm a lucky guy because <laughs> I have this <laughs> to go home to. And she makes airplane stuff, so she's just learning this. Monica's been teaching her. And uh, so while I've been working on other scrappy parts and carbon fiber, they've been hanging out over here in Jason Sneed's hangar doing my control surfaces. So two layers total, one down, <laughs> one to go. We're adding a whole nother layer, glue jointed, two layers over the whole thing. So rivets down and then a new layer and uh, we'll be ready for paint. So <laughs> I'm gonna let my wife keep doing the beautiful work that she's doing. And I'm gonna go back to work on Scrappy. All right. Okay, got this now trimmed out. I've got my little Y out of it. You can see this stick was right here. And when I laid up the bottom and I had pre-cut it, I was able to then cut the little ticks and pop this out. Now what I'll do is I'll come in and trim and leave a little quarter inch edge around this so that this has something to bond to, which will get just siliconed in. And then a clear bra um, tape put across just the Y section. And that'll be the permanent installation. There'll be no need to get underneath here what will be underneath here, I'll show you in a second, is the big C-channel tracks that the parachute straps are in. And all these bolt holes you see bolt to that big C-channel frame. And that's what will give the strength to these 
um, all these parts when I cut out this Y for the parachute straps to rip through. Tried to make everything to be kind of a snap lock, so I put a little return on all the edges. So we center that up there and here. There it goes. So it's just like a spring-loaded snap lock. Now that's on. And if you look under here, come on under here, you can now see these are the Y tracks for the parachute straps. I got all the nut plates in here to attach it. And uh, I can cut out the rest of that plate and the straps will pull through it. So hope that makes sense. We're getting closer. <laughs> but I couldn't be happier with the fit. I've still got to put a carbon fiber trim around the window, but it is watertight and sealed in my little skylight. So we're getting closer. That's work. That's so awesome. It's a weekend. I got two days where I actually get to put in like 14 hour days plus. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm going to finish this, this cover with my um, skylight in it today. I just put down the last piece. I've got the skylight bonded in and now I'm putting on a top. So it's actually sandwiched between four layers of carbon on top and on the other side. A half inch edge is pinching it. So it's going to be watertight, put in permanent. And it's such a, a perfect piece with no holes in it, no drills, no binding spots. It'd be really hard to break this. I mean, I think you'd actually have to take a hammer and beat the, beat the tar out of it to get it to have a problem. But if it broke, <laughs> it'd be major surgery to replace it. So I don't think that's even possible. But if it happened, I know a guy. You know someone like that? Let's just say I know a guy who knows a guy who knows another guy. <laughs> we can fix it. Uh, anyway, this is drying up. I've sprayed a couple parts in the blow up bouncy house spray booth, booth and then we'll sand a few more. So <laughs> I'm excited. We're going to get a lot done. Five projects at once. Back to work. All right, guys, let me show you what my wife and Monica have been working on. So use this to burn holes through the little tape for the rivets. Then Chandra put the rivets in here. The next step after that, if you come over to this one, over to the rudder, you can see then we put glue down. And then these little pencil lines you see marked out here are the lines for what would normally be a two inch tape. We are putting that down to bridge across the top of the rivet. And then we're still doing a full second layer of fabric over the whole thing. And we'll glue those together and pull them tight. So. Basically, we have one additional step that's just really thickening it up and a whole lot more rivets. So kind of before, part way, after, and there's a couple more afters. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right, let me show you what I'm doing now. I've got this. This is the parachute jettison cover. And we'll just try this fit right here. This goes right there. You can see how well that fits. Made perfect. Um, so the way this works, you can see this little section that opens up here. I've got to cut it and do it here. Right where this metal bracket is on the inside is where the rocket launcher is. That rocket has 2,000 pounds of braking force as it jettisons upward. So this point right here, after I get it painted and installed, would just be attached with clear bra all the way up. The main carbon fiber top you can see has bolt points all the way around and it's permanently attached, bolted down and removable. But this rocket area, if the rocket goes off, this will just tear the clear bra joint that goes around it, flip this up, 
That allows the rocket to gain momentum, dragging the cables out that pull the rocket. As that gets up higher, starts to pull, there's a little loop right here, you can see, passes through into the parachute box. That's where the cables will sit. And as soon as they go tight, it will then pull the rest of this top off. And I actually need to lay up on the back side of this. I'm gonna do 10 more layers of carbon fiber. It's more than this, the specs call out, but there is a fail point if you don't do this area strong enough, and that's the cables tearing through this lid rather than ripping the lid off. We don't want it to tear, we want the cables to hit and explode this lid off so that the parachute can drag out. So I'm gonna reinforce this even stronger. And then once the parachute drags out of this center bay, then as it opens up from here on, um, I actually am gonna cut a seam right here and that will be a fold joint. So this will fold and then this section will fold away from this. Once the parachute's out and it opens, you don't have to worry about how much force it takes to rip the rest out because now the weight of the aircraft is under canopy and the entire weight of the aircraft pulling on these big two inch uh, heavy duty straps, they're like a tow strap for towing vehicles, will then just rip the rest of that track out and sling the, pair of the aircraft and bring it down slow. So that's what I've got to do now. The fit worked out great. I got to put some paint on it, reinforce the backside. Since this is such a critical area and I'm over building it uh, based on the spec call outs, I still want to test it. So I'm really excited about this. BRS Parachutes uh, said they'd be happy to send me an extra rocket and a used parachute. And we're gonna install the whole system. And I made two of these exactly the same. Exact bid layup, strength, structure, in every way. They are mirror images of each other. So I have one to destroy and one to put back on. So we are actually gonna launch the parachute out here on the field with the plane on the ground and see how that works. One. The rip up, the secondary fold, the deployment, and uh, if everything goes well, we'll put the new parachute, new rocket, the other new replacement of this back on the airplane and hope and plan that they never come out of the aircraft ever. But if I'm somewhere in the crazy back countries of Alaska that I've seen where there is absolutely no landing spot or rock cliff terrains of the, the Rockies I fly, and even in a bush plane, there's absolutely no way to stick it, I'll pull that chute. More than likely, we'll just fly it down, but I'm gonna have a backup. So let's finish getting it built, get it installed, back to work. I want you to see, this has now got two layers. Conventionally, you would see this tape, and you can barely see if you look close, and I'll kind of get a zoom in in a minute, but uh, where that, uh, serrated edges and the second layer covered that up. So this tape line that sometimes over time you start to see come up or you re-glue down, it's, it's gone. It can never come off because this second layer went over top of the conventional method. So this is two layers and what's great about doing two layers, it's two layers of medium fabric. It's light, medium and heavy. Two layers of medium is significantly thicker than the heavy. But more importantly, when you do two layers, we lose that tape seam, but also it's like making a sheet of plywood. Two layers of fabric put together is stronger than the thickness of a single layer if it were the same thickness. Getting that bond between the two is like layering sheets of material. So one plus one equals three, not two, when you do this method. And we lose the seam. So kind of look here real close up. You can see this side. If you look, we haven't finished ironing out the little bubbles in here, but you can see that tape line is gone. And when we paint it, it'll be almost invisible. And you can see here, we just started the, the second layer here, glued and ironed that down. And this layer now will wrap around this way. And those corners, one's going one way, one's going the other. They're wrapped on opposite sides. So I couldn't be happier. The lines are really clean. These guys are amazing. I, I gotta say, I don't have the patience to, I watch these guys cut so perfect and so straight, like a quarter inch at a time. I've never seen straighter lines in my life. So um, 
though I was playing with it and I think I could do it, I couldn't do it as good as these girls. So <laughs> I'm gonna bow out and go back over in the other hangar and work on Scrappy. So keep it up, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you liked that video. I'm gonna call it a wrap for tonight. For me, it is Saturday night, the night before Father's Day, which is tomorrow. So um, I don't know what time it is. It may actually already be Father's Day. <laughs> it probably is Father's Day. So anyway, what I'm gonna do, get home, take a day off tomorrow, spend it with my family, doing what I love the most, which is enjoying time with them outdoors. There's beautiful world we live in. So I hope you did the same or are doing the same. Um, spend time with your family, let them know you love them. And if even if there's some of them out there that you maybe don't like so much, <laughs> make sure you let them know you love them as well. Um, family's the most important thing in the world. So I hope you never forget it, despite any trials you may have, every family does. So what I'm gonna do, take a break. Enjoy my family tomorrow, and then we'll get back to work.